Tifu by losing bowel control before a client meeting in the middle of NYC. Obligatory happened last summer. Throwaway. Typing this on mobile, so apologies for formatting, spelling, etc., etc. This is quite a ride, so hold on. I travel to NYC for work fairly often. Most of the time I stay overnight, but this particular day I had two major meetings and decided to just fly up and back the same day as it's an easy, non-stop flight from where I live. This detail matters later. I'd been going through a pretty overwhelming few months of work and family life and had been stress drinking and eating to the point that I thought it would be a good idea to do a detox ahead of these meetings, and especially since I wasn't staying the night and wouldn't need to take clients for dinner or drinks. I just cleanse, stick to the detox rules, do my meetings, and fly home. Easy. So a few days before the trip, I ordered a cleanse from an online retailer. It wasn't something I'd used before, but had lots of positive reviews, seemed effective, and so I bought it. In my haste to get the cleanse rolling quickly, I glossed over two important details from the website. One, the cleanse company said it worked very quickly, convinced my lizard brain this was a positive and not at all risky. And two, all the reviews that said it worked well, but not ever be far from the toilet. Alas, hindsight. The cleanse arrived, and I begin. The reviews were right. It worked lightning quick and was very effective. The tiny herbal pills I swallowed seemed hell-bent to rid my body of anything and everything that wasn't tied down. I also greatly underestimated the number of times one could visit the toilet in a day and the sheer volume of junk I had packed away in my bloated body. For the first few days, the shit fairy would visit at all hours, flushing me out and sometimes virulently living up to the claims made on the detox website. But, with these two meetings looming, I knew I had to find some regularity again, or I was going to have a very bad time. Fortunately, after a few days of my intestines being stormed like Normandy on D-Day, I found a rhythm. No coffee, only the very smallest servings of the various fruits or veg the instructions listed, and planned to be right by a toilet after eating, just in case. This seemed to work, and just in time for my trip. Day of the trip arrives, and because I travel frequently, I was upgraded to business class on my very early morning flight. Even better, I thought, I'll arrive rested and ready to go. But 4 a.m. wake-up calls tend to leave us a little groggy, and I hadn't slept well the night before. Nerves for the meetings, no less. So when I finally boarded into my first-class seat, I still wasn't fully awake. Flight attendant comes by asking if I wanted coffee, and despite the temptation, the gurgle in my stomach was enough to turn it down and stick with water. Flight takes off, and as we reach altitude, I begin to smell the breakfast. Turns out, this flight was just long enough that first-class cabin would be offered a proper meal en route. Having completely deprived myself of everything except water and some fruits, veg, and nuts for days, somehow the ravenous urge to eat won out over the much wiser gurgle in my stomach, begging me not to. When they came around to take orders, I'd somewhat returned to my senses and only ordered the cold plate, which includes fruits, cheeses, and a bit of bread. Convinced myself it would be fine, and rewarded myself for bravely turning down an omelet by drinking a cup of coffee to wake up and be prepped for the meetings. This, as they say, was the point of no return. After breakfast, all seemed calm, a little too calm. I opened my laptop to get some final meeting prep done, and the rest of the flight was uneventful. Upon landing, however, the internal tempest began anew, and I'd never been more grateful to be first off the plane in my life. So through LaGuardia Airport, I sprint speed walked, clenching and praying and desperately searching for a bathroom. Found it, stripped with sonic speed and released. Relief, gurgle gone, balance restored, lesson learned. Play it cool the rest of the day, no more tempting the feces gods. Pulled out my phone to order an Uber into the city and realized two colleagues, who were traveling in as well, but had, I thought, missed their flight, were outside the terminal and had already ordered a car. On one hand, I figured my body was empty and no more crises would arise. On the other hand, was simply the question, what if I'm wrong? I wish I'd heeded the latter. We piled into the back of the taxi. All three of us packed together. First part of the drive was uneventful. I was leading the first meeting, so they were asking me questions, talking through scenarios. It felt like a good distraction. Then, 
As we crossed into Manhattan, the gurgle returned with a vengeance. I've been in some harrowing, life-threatening situations in my day, but packed into the back of this yellow cab on the verge of unleashing detox diarrhea, I've never been more panicked in my life. For the next 10, trafficked stacked blocks, I'm not even sure if what I said was coherent. All I could do was clench and hold out hope, reminiscent of Gandalf slamming his staff to the rocks and screaming to Durin's bane, you shall not pass. After a few final sweaty blocks of sphincter workouts, one of my colleagues says, hey, let's just walk from here, it's not that far. Generally, I love walking in New York City, but not when the Aztec two-step is trying to dance straight out of my ass. So naturally, in my delirium, I quickly said, that's a great idea, I love walking, fuck. So we got out, assessed our directions, and set out. Within the first few steps, the stomach cramps subsided a bit, so I allowed myself a brief yet fateful exhale. Immediately upon exhaling, I felt a fart coming on, as if it bears repeating, never ever trust a fart. And again, much like Gandalf and Durin's bane, just as the journey continued, the tail of feculence rose up from the deep and struck me down. The fart was coming, and by the time I realized it wasn't a fart but a flood, it was too late. My clenchers were exhausted and useless, and there, in the middle of Manhattan, I shit myself. And this one felt like revenge. I stopped on the sidewalk terrified, eyes darting down at the ground to see if my dark slacks showed any signs of excrement or if I'd begun leaking onto the sidewalk. Momentarily, everything was contained, but I knew I had to find a way out of this quick and with the least fallout possible. But because I wasn't staying the night, didn't have a hotel or a change of clothes, I had to improvise. My colleagues stopped to ask if everything was okay. I whipped out my phone and said I needed to sort something and for them to go on. Fortunately, they did. I didn't want to make many unnecessary moves as my trousers were doing stunning work of holding back all my runny sins. So I frantically looked around for any open shop that might have a bathroom where I could hide and try to salvage the day if that were even possible at this point. A work door opened to a hallway next to me, and inside I could see what looked like a rather industrial bathroom. So before the door closes, I took my chance and awkwardly squish waddled towards it, avoiding eye contact with everyone, and bolted myself inside. With the meeting deadline looming, I got to work. Fortunately, it seemed I'd lucked into a maintenance housekeeping bathroom. Loads of supplies, soaps, detergents laying around. So I stripped, put my undies and socks in a plastic bag, and tossed them out. Then, half naked, I began to scrub my slacks with all the soap I could find in the big washing sink tub in the bathroom, like I'd never scrubbed before. All the while, making short hops to the toilet to do what seemed like an unending stream of every bad decision I'd ever made, finally leaving my body. Never had I been more grateful I was wearing dark-colored pants than in that moment. After what seemed like an hour, they smelled mostly soapy, so I wrung out as much water as I could to reassess. With the time I had left and the distance I was from the meeting, I knew I had no other choice than to go in damp and hope no one noticed. So, that's what I did. Still not trusting my stomach and my body still reeling with intestinal trauma, I walked as quickly and carefully as I could barely arriving in time. Fortunately, this was one of those offices where everyone uses high tables, so we stood around and I stood a little further away, just in case. We finished the meeting and landed the client. One meeting down, one to go. But this time I had a little time and space. Bid my colleagues farewell, as the next meeting was just me. Ran to a clothing store, found new undies and trousers, threw my heroic slacks in a dumpster, and didn't eat or drink anything for the remainder of the day. All in all, this still keeps me up at night, and I imagine will do for some time. TLDR, started a detox from a shady company, didn't follow the rules, had to fly to NYC for meetings, and promptly shit myself upon arrival with no change of clothes.